So last time I saw you guys, the yellow FD was overheating. But we have an update on that. The CYM FD is still overheating. Let's go. I'm a rock star with a baby. I'm a hot shot with a man with a team that I need to do when they down to some free now. I'm a pop up in these cars and you see all these things that I've got now. I don't know the words, but this song is fucking fire. Welcome back, guys. So, there's a couple things we got to do before we start working on that FD. And uh, the first thing is we got to go to Walmart for Hussein because. Um, he decided he needs to eat or something. I don't know. Um, I've never used one of these products before, but since um, we are dealing with that shop, I figured why not at least try to flush this. Typically I just use water. But this specifically states that it works on rust. So, I mean, there's a first time for everything. So, uh, I already got one, but we're gonna go ahead and try to use this. Um, if you don't recommend this, you should probably tell me in the comments, but I won't read them till after the video is posted. So it doesn't really make sense. Anyway. Brother, what? Brother, brother, come on now. How? Bro, she is just thugging with the house on top of the Honda Odyssey. Bro, you might you see some stuff. Like, even this trailer right in front of us. Like, man, I love this place. I love Yuma. Okay, before we get started, we're going to go ahead and get this thing started and turn around so that the exhaust is going out that way and not in here and we're not dying or anything. So I realized I probably didn't explain what the plan for today is. So I assume uh, the coolant that's in there probably is old or just tap water or there's rust because of how long the car sat, pretty much not really being touched. So although they charged them for coolant, the thermostat and all that stuff, we went over to Mazatrix and got new parts. Um, and I went over to Walmart just now and got some distilled water. So what I'm gonna do is drain everything in it out that's both at the radiator and at the block and just kind of do a health check real quick. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get this thing up in the air. And one, two. <laughs> that was stupid, but we're up. Um, I didn't really use any jack stands, I'm just using some tires real quick. Uh, I know a lot of you guys really aren't gonna be into that, but. So here's the V-mount. The radiator seems to be pretty nice. It's got, a, it's a little beat up, but uh, it's pretty nice. The V-mount itself is really crooked. Um, that's supposed to be a brand new core, but it looks like there's something either missing from or clogged up on this intercooler. Okay, it's just oil or something. Uh, I'm sure it's not a big deal, but what is a big deal to me anyway is the way our fans here are held on. Um, it's pretty loose. There's a lot of space all around the fan uh, shroud and everything. Like, look at these gaps. Like... Like here's the fan shroud work. It looks like they just took a Dremel and just cut it out for the water neck here. Um, which I guess like, but the space, the just giant space and it's just kind of uneven. 
and the fans like move really easily so i don't think i don't think that's how you'd want it uh it still has the factory fans which i've only heard really good things about but we'll probably end up um getting a fan shroud because that just doesn't really seem like the way you'd want to go with this but yeah if this is like acceptable like good work in the rotary community let me know and i'll leave it just kidding i would never uh we're gonna change it anyway but this uh this is this isn't really the standard so hopefully whenever we're sitting in traffic we can get a little bit better performance out of them that way but i feel like right now they're not doing as much as they could be so obviously I'm pretty new to this channel, but if you hang out with me here in the garage, you know exactly what I do with this bucket. Any kind of fluids, you know, I keep it clean and then uh, I empty it into here. It's clear so I can see kind of the condition of whatever's coming out of it. So now we're just gonna start by turning from the pet cock here on the side. Uh, there, oh, there it is. So we'll start by draining that and seeing what she looks like. Okay, let's... That Honda sounds like ass. Oh my goodness. That's a good amount of rust, I'm pretty sure. Maybe that's normal with the rotary engine. I know they're all like iron and stuff, so let's see what else comes out. Oh, it's yellow water. Oh my God, that smells like, that smells like cat pee pee. Jeez, I'm wetting up my good pants here, man. I usually don't like for anyone to wet my pants except for me, but come on, come on. Oh, that smells so bad. But sure enough, it's just water. Um, all right. Oh, you know what? I should probably take the pressure caps off. Yuck. Here's another thing I find weird about this cooling system is I know typically uh, one of these would be like if this was the AST, this would be the uh, 1.3 or 1.6 bar um, pressure cap, but it also has one here. So it's got two pressure caps. Uh, and this looks clean. I don't know if there's any water that ever goes in there, but this is good and crusty. Uh, I assume this is our overflow tank because we got the hose that goes straight to the bottom of that one. And nothing that comes out of the top, so maybe that's... I don't, I don't really know. Um, if you guys know though, please help. I don't know. So once that's all empty, we're gonna go ahead and take this AST delete or whatever thing off and check the thermostat, which could also give us some pretty good indicators. Okay, so this is all that came out of the radiator, which it seems like it's a little low. It's probably kind of low on coolant. Um, well, there's no coolant. This, uh, I assume it's all just water and rust. So based on the level of their work so far, I do not believe this would have been distilled water if they do that. Although I, I know a lot of uh, race car guys run 100% water and maybe a water wetter. I don't think that that's the case in this. I feel like I would not be surprised if this were hose water. We still have to drain the block, but um, so far we got, you know, the light on it here. It's, it's you know, there's some rust in there, but surprisingly i was expecting worse considering it's been you know it's been in virginia for a while and i know that place does experience some some freezing i expected it would be a whole lot worse than this the flow of the water coming out also was not steady which i mean it could be because everything is hard uh is hard piped but we'll see next we're going to go ahead and drain the block and see what that looks like and we're going to refill this with not only uh, distilled water, but with also a flush or two, just to kind of see what we can get out of it. Oh, okay. So we have a brand new oil pan on this car. Um, do you guys know what this, this line here goes to? I'm not sure, but this thing is so drippy. It should never rust. But we have a brand new oil pan here. Um, brand new everything but we still have what appears to be a leak at the oil pan gasket um help uh well we could do it again we can drop the subframe and change that pan out again but that leads me to think maybe something else is warped or maybe it needs a little bit more rtv i don't know there's a lot of stuff unplugged under here still um 
but yeah that actually worries me because it's dripping on the ground it's just it's just moist anyway we're under here for that guy let's go ahead and get this coolant out also this is this is kind of cute the radiator is actually only held on with one bolt so. <laughs> that's actually really funny love to see it so yeah the block was the same story a good amount of rust but mostly water and uh for whatever reason they like impacted that thing on it was pretty tight uh so yeah let's let that go ahead and evacuate so i almost forgot while that's draining let me go ahead and take this moment to uh give a big big like huge shout out huge appreciation to this build sponsor and that's uh that's you guys so it may not seem like a big deal, but it's a huge deal to me. I'm really excited about this. But this uh, yellow car, uh, the videos, obviously it's Iori's channel, so it's already monetized, but the videos for this car have officially made a dollar. And I'm not saying that to be like facetious, if that's the right word. I'm so stoked, I'm so stoked. Not because this car has earning potential on the channel, but just because like, these videos my videos don't get very many views but the duration is super high which tells me you guys are actually interested you're invested in it and you're helping me fix this car and you're actually watching most of the video which is pretty crazy man like uh i'm super thankful i'm super grateful i know i don't know all of you but there's like 200 of you guys who like as soon as it's posted you're on it uh there's like 20 maybe 10 of you guys in the comments that are just uh really helping me out and man i appreciate that i it means a lot more than you know any anything else that's that's happened with this car so thank you guys for that um but in all seriousness let's get back to the car uh should be done draining the fluid right now and we'll check it out in the sunlight just so uh you guys can help me get a better idea of this Okay, we're in the sunlight. We're on top of the trash can here. Uh, let me turn it this way. And this is what we got. Um, you can change your stuff to HD if you'd like. But here, let's get a closer look. Oh, so I don't know if you can tell, but it's all kind of one uniform color. Not a whole lot of chunks. Uh, there's some dead bugs and stuff in there that may have flown in while we were draining it. But if you kind of look at it from an angle, I hope the camera's picking it up. There's kind of like little uh, oil droplets, kind of like after you wash your dishes after cooking a steak, how it's got that um, nice like purple, purplish color that could be water wetter or something, but it could also be assembly lube from the, uh, from the assembly because it's pretty new. I don't really know. I've never built one of these motors, so I don't, I don't know what it's supposed to look like, but to me, it smells terrible, uh, but it's got this pretty even rust color. So I think I'm hoping that's a good thing and not a sign that there's something very wrong other than it being rusty. So what we're going to go do next is um, we're going to fill it with some distilled water and then we're going to go ahead and flush it with the flush stuff that I bought from Walmart. Um, hopefully that all works out and we can get this thing flushed out, empty, clean of the rust. And then what's gonna happen is I'm gonna fill it up with just water this time. And then we're going to revisit this system because we're also gonna do some beautification of the engine bay once everything is actually running and consistent. So I don't wanna waste a whole lot of uh, coolant because that's kind of expensive. And again, this everything that's being done to this car is free. So that being said, let's go ahead and get this filled up. Okay, now that we're empty, let's get this thing started. We're gonna start with this uh, Rizlon Super Flush stuff. It says this, it says this will do like four gallon system or something. So we'll go ahead and bust it open, pour it on down. Oh. Nice, now let's add our water. I have never had a car like 
fill this slow. So maybe the hard lines weren't a great idea. Okay, so draining the radiator and the engine, just a gallon and a half about came out, right? And I'm a little stumped because here I was able to put a, this, this whole thing, this included, is only one gallon and that uh, coolant flush, which is odd. It can't really squeeze any of the pipes because they're all metal. Oh, we get some, some air coming out. Like if I shake the whole car, um, so yeah, I wonder like, is this just like a really inefficient design or is there like a big blockage somewhere? So I think what I'm going to do is just start the car so that the water pump here at least gives it some suction or pressure to try to pull some of that in and see what happens. So we turn it off, the level's dropping, it's gonna continue to drop, and we'll keep it topped off. And then we will give it some time to cool off, get the radiator flush out of there, and put some more stuff in it. I don't know. Okay, here's round number two, doesn't look any better. I got another dead fly in there, don't really know what's going on, but I'm gonna pour it into one of these, and hopefully we can compare them side by side. This video should definitely be uploaded already, but um, the coolant gets kind of hot when you're trying to do this. So. Um, I'm going to go ahead and remove this little RTV guy to see what that thermostat looks like. Maybe I'll just take it off. Um, and if I shouldn't, you guys should tell me I shouldn't in the comments. But by the time you see this, I already did it. So, um, yeah. Oh, big shouts to, to the harbor. You know, we only use the best round here. All right. Let's see what's going on under here. Come on, partner. All right, I probably got to use my hands for this one. So this was like stuck in there. Um, this moves pretty easy. I don't, I don't know. We'll do a hot water test with it, but the seal is definitely uh, dried out on this bad boy, which is probably why they put the RTV on there. Which is weird because on the invoice they charged him for a brand new uh, thermostat, but. Maybe they didn't replace the thermostat seal. I don't know. Uh, this isn't good. We're going to go compare it next to the one we got from Mazda Trucks. So here's a quick side-by-side -side of the three. I hope this lighting is good. Here we have the one that came out of the car. Um, just has that single bar. I don't know anything about thermostats. But since they RTV'd everything, this relief valve, if that's what it is, I don't know what that is, that hole, it was actually completely clogged up. Um, and the seal can't be new because like you can't even bend it it just crumbles apart this is the uh, murray plus from uh, o'reilly's it looks a lot like this one so i'm pretty sure this is just a part store one that they lathered in a uh, rtv which it shouldn't need because if it has a good seal it'll be good and then this one is the one we got from mazda tricks it does look a good bit different on the front but they pretty much operate the same i'm pretty sure it also has the relief thing, but it's inside here, and it's a lot bigger than these two. Um, and again, it also comes with a fresh seal. On the back side, we got, this one has like a copper opening or something. This one's just got like a press fit, and this one looks like a big version of this one. So. That, that's the difference. Um, I love O'Reilly's to death, but we're going to go with the Mazda Tricks piece just because this is an authentic Mazda part and we don't want any um, issues with this car because we, all, we already don't know enough about it. Okay, so uh, I think I figured out why they were using the RTV. So this guy, this bolt here is actually stripped out. So I think they just uh, put a random bolt in there because it's also a different size than the other two. Uh, it's a little bit shorter and I think they just ugga dug at it and then put the RTV to keep it from leaking. And that probably explains why, since they have been the only people to really touch the motor, why after all those years, they probably never wanted to replace that thermostat, right? So 
Um, we'll probably have to tap that later, but for now we're still just focusing on getting this cooling system bled. So while we're bleeding, we might have a leak there, but that's okay. We'll fix it in a minute. So it's getting late, but I pretty much did this process four more times and the fluid didn't even look that much different. So we're going to come back to this. All right, boys, it's uh, pretty late. As you can see outside, it got dark and I'm actually a pretty good neighbor. So I, I'm not going to. I'm not gonna keep running this car, especially since we have not put the racing beat on it yet. So once we put the racing beat on, once we put the adult exhaust on, we can uh, ride around or play around with it a whole lot more often, maybe through the night and wrap around the neighborhood. But until then, I really don't wanna inconvenience these people. Plus the next door neighbor actually just bought me some food. Uh, she said she noticed I was in the garage all day and that I didn't stop to eat. Which I'm like, damn bro, you must have been you must have been looking, but all that means is she's going to ask me to fix her stuff here pretty soon. Um, not realizing I'm a complete moron, but if you guys enjoyed this video, I'm sorry we didn't fix it, but you got to see some of the stuff that I'm up against. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, subscribe, because today is Friday and I'm dropping it Friday today, part of the daily upload thing. And the more you comment and stuff, the more I'm going to be entertained on my ride to Iori's house. Yes, tomorrow I'm going to be working on the Miata. We're going to take a little break from this guy. But tomorrow we have some Miata content coming. If you are excited about that, let me know in the comments. Please leave a like. Um, I'm so happy with the traffic in you guys. Like, it's it's awesome. So, I think that's all I got. Um, outro. Bye!